So I just finished watching The Witcher Netflix series, and, well, I want to get my opinions down on this before it fades from my memory, and while it's still culturally relevant. When this series was first announced, I didn't really care. I did play The Witcher 3, but that was it. I wasn't a fan of The Witcher novels, and I didn't play the first two games in the series. Clearly, it offers a lot of depth and lore to satisfy the geekier aspects of my personality. Fortunately, adding one more deep fantasy series than I'm expected to fall into is just too much for my brain to handle, so I cannot call myself a true fan, more of a casual fan at best. When The Witcher Netflix series was announced, I gave it a profound, eh, and I didn't care. It was seemed to me like it was greenlit as a response to the popularity of Game of Thrones based on the Song of Ice and Fire, Song of Ice and Fire novel series, which I would count myself as a legitimate fan of both the TV show and the books. So it seemed like an insult to our collective intelligence that this TV series existed at all, mocking us with a cheap imitation of George Martin's work. But when the reviews of the Netflix series started rolling out, I immediately felt something was wrong here. I have little respect for movie or TV reviews, especially from the likes of video game review sites, but the reviews seemed especially bad, as though the reviewers simply didn't understand what they were watching, so I decided to give the show a go. If they didn't like it, maybe I would. I liked The Witcher 3, but didn't have any experience with the series other than that game. That makes my understanding of the backstory in the game world, or the Witcher world as a whole, somewhat limited. I had some, but not much, previous knowledge of the backstory, so my perspective was somewhat informed by that, but in practice it amounted to little more than recognizing character names and the concept of what a Witcher is. This, uh, this is going to contain spoilers, so be aware of that. The Netflix series takes place over a period of several decades, primarily from the perspective of three characters, Geralt, Yennefer, and Cirilla. Many episodes feature all three characters, regardless of whether or not their stories interact with each other. Despite being the main character of the novel series, Geralt is given the least cohesive story treatment here. Each episode features him tackling a new challenge, with different goals and motivations in mind. It feels as though Geralt's story carrying him through the first season was assembled from several different short stories strung together. He is hired as an assassin in one episode, has to cure a curse in another, hunt a dragon in another. What do these have to do with each other? Not much. Token effort is made to string the plots together, but they are insubstantial and largely ineffective, mostly only amounting to casual references to previous events or reoccurring characters that don't have a significant impact on what happens in the show. This doesn't really suit the modern golden age of television concept that we have come accustomed to with shows like Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, Westworld, Breaking Bad, that can go on from there where the contiguous story is told throughout the series' progression. Because of this fractured story, Geralt has no significant character arc other than realizing he must honor his obligations to Ciri, which is a relevation he comes to rather late in the season, and is mostly motivated by the needs of the plot, not something that is motivated by the individual stories he takes part in. Ciri's story, on the other hand, is the most cohesive of the three. Taking part over what was probably only a few days, there's a single narrative told from beginning to end. She watches her grandparents go to war, escapes the castle during the siege, flees into the woods, spend time, spends time with refugees, runs into the dryads, and ends the story with a first encounter with Geralt. Although there are some different chapters to her story, they all flow from one to another naturally. Fortunately, some of the episodes feel inconsequential to the overall plot, the time Ciri spends with the refugees is important for the sake of world-building, showing the racism of her kingdom, the misery of the refugees, and the resentment of Ciri's family her people have. But the episode begins and ends with Ciri in the same situation. The plot doesn't move forward, even if what we watched wasn't really a bad episode. It's the only problem I have with Ciri's storyline. She is present in every episode, even if her story is stretched thin, so she doesn't really have anything to accomplish in every individual episode. Yennefer's story is clearly the one the writers of the show cared the most about. Ironically, it's also the story I feel probably should have been left out of the season. 
While not as cohesive a series, Yennefer's story is better constructed than Geralt's. The story goes from Yennefer's youth having the congenital deformity of a hunchback and getting re recruited, I'm putting that one in air quotes, to the Brotherhood of Sorcerers. She has a rough start, unable to do simple magics, but eventually becomes a powerful mage. Through spell work, she is turned into a beautiful woman and given the assignment of a kingdom I can't remember the name of. The assignment eventually is abandoned and seeks out treatment for her infertility. She runs in the Geralt and then is pulled in the war against Nilfgaard. Clearly a lot happens in Yen's storyline, especially since it happens over a period of several decades, let's say too much happens. The writers were faced with the problem of having to tell Yennefer's backstory, leading up to the current events of the show, but had to rush so quickly through important aspects of her story that they had little impact on the viewer. Why should I care that Yen left the service of the kingdom if she only was assigned to them at the end of the previous episode? While there is something like a 30 year time skip between those episodes, Yen's story doesn't really feel it. The viewers don't feel it, and they may not even notice. Yen's story feels like a much longer story which was compressed down to fit the show's format. Lots of details were lost, as well as a sense of pace. The biggest issue people seem to have with the Netflix series is the disjointed timeline portrayed in every episode. The series' story takes place over probably only a few days, while Geralt's and Yen's take place over several decades. Yen's probably longer than Geralt's. While there are clues to this fact and dialogue, they're easily missed or forgotten. In the first episode, there are references to an event that happens to Ciri's grandmother, maybe I would assume 30 years before the start, before that episode. And then five minutes later, in Geralt's part of the episode, those events are referenced as though they just occurred. She's a child. You won your first battle in Hotchbuzz when you were my age. Queen Calanthe of Sintra. She just won her first battle at Hotchbuzz. In another episode, Ciri is running through the forest while Geralt is dining with her family. In Ciri's place on the timeline, her family is dead. Geralt's scenes take place over a decade before Ciri's, so I understand how this can be confusing. I just don't see it as big of a problem as others do. While it is somewhat confusing, each character's story should really be taken individually anyway. Other shows have done this disjointed timeline, such as The Incredible Westworld, to much better effect but I can't condemn The Witcher for failing to live up to that standard. At times, the series does expect too much of its viewers. The clues as to where each character's events land on the timeline are a bit subtle. Expecting a single throwaway line in the first episode to be a clue and Geralt's story, how it takes place in relation to the series. But there are reoccurring characters with little significance, and, but we are expected to have emotional connections too. Look, I know Sabrina was in the first few episodes of the series, and then she reappeared later on, but don't expect me to feel any emotions when she stabs Yen with an arrow. The acting is surprisingly good. I expected Henry Cavill's performance to suck, but he pulls off the subtleties of Geralt I expected of the character. Being a much bigger fan of the series than I am, Cavill seems to know what to do. Yennefer's actress, who has a name I'm not sure I can pronounce, does a fine job as well. Freya Allen does an admirable job portraying Ciri. The actress is several years older than the character, I would assume, which is important because child actors are generally garbage. Uh, if I had had to do anything differently, first and probably the only thing I would change is to eliminate Yennefer's backstory from the season. I'd still have her present in the fifth and sixth episodes, and maybe beyond that, portraying her history as more mysterious than what it was in the show. When the second season came around, I'd devote an entire episode or two to her just to catch up with her backstory, and moved on from there. The problem is her overly complex backstory weighed down the episodes, shortening Geralt and Ciri's screen time, meaning that their episodes, even if they had a lot more to show, had to be truncated. Overall though, I like the show. It has its flaws, but shows a lot of potential. Even the flaws I pointed out were not big deal breakers. The show is good. Don't listen to the critics. The critics are idiots. Except for me. 
listen to me. <laughs> <laughs>